So Rydnik of the Kakin Princes has been built up to be the central antagonist in the Succession War arc. He is in possession of the remaining Kurta eyes which our protagonist Kurapika has always been searching for. His involvement in the Succession War is the entire reason why Kurapika is even here. We would not be getting this arc if not for the Terror Sandwich. This is a man with frightening potential who has just recently awakened his Nen. He is a specialist type and his Hatsu allows him to see 10 seconds into the future, an incredibly broken precognitive ability. On top of that, he has the Guardian Spirit Beast that was hatched by the Seed Urn for the Succession War, and to make him even more terrifying, he has awakened a second Nen Beast through currently unknown means. This is a man with the potential to surpass every single character we know of in the entire story thus far. He could genuinely reach Meruem levels of power, and that is very, very scary to think about. Because he doesn't just have immense potential, the scariest part about Saridnik is his capacity for evil. There honestly isn't a single person in the entire Hunter x Hunter universe who poses more of a threat than Saridnik from a psychological perspective. This man is practically a serial killing sociopath with zero empathy, zero care for others and an absolute desire for destruction. He considers everybody other than himself to be trash, stating that his first order as king will be to separate the masses into useful trash and useless trash. This man is just pure evil. So evil that I believe he is the devil in the world of Hunter x Hunter. This is a theory that was brought to my attention by a good friend over on Twitter. I have left his link in the description and I just want to thank him for bringing this to me and by extension you guys watching because I am almost certain this theory is accurate to some extent and it will completely blow everybody's minds. With that being said, let's dive right into this. The Sonata of Darkness is a piece of music said to be composed by Satan himself. It was introduced to us through Melody in the York New Arc and it is said that whoever performs this piece of music or listens to it will be horribly cursed. Melody is the prime example of this. She was once a beautiful woman but upon hearing one movement of the flute solo of the Sonata, her appearance was changed dramatically and her friend who was with her died a gruesome death. The only positive thing to come out of hearing it was the supernatural hearing that Melody was given, allowing her to hear people's heartbeats. The sonata is comprised of solo parts for the piano, violin, harp and flute. Melody only heard a single movement of one of the four, the flute solo, and it completely changed her forever. Imagine how terrifying not just one complete solo, but the full sonata could be. For this reason, Melody became a hunter to hunt down the terrifying sheet of music and destroy it. Kurapika thought the sonata was an urban myth that couldn't possibly exist. That is how crazy it sounds. But of course, Melody shows Kurapika a picture of her former self and convinces him. I think you know where this video is going. I believe Saridnik could be associated with the sonata in some way, but before I explain why I believe this to be the case, let's take a look at Kurapika and Melody's dynamic within the story. At the end of the conversation where Melody explained her ambitions to Kurapika, she states that she chose the job with the Nostrade family because she had hoped one devil would know another. Kurapika and Melody's ultimate ambitions are tied together from the moment they met. Kurapika wants to hunt down the Kurta clan's eyes and Melody wants to hunt down the devil Sonata. Both are things that black market collectors are interested in and both are sources of loss and trauma for both Kurapika and Melody. Kurapika lost his entire clan and Melody lost her friend. They both secretly hold onto things from the past that remind them of their objective. For Kurapika it's the Scarlet Eyes and for Melody it's the picture of her former self. These two characters have been woven together and currently on the Black Whale they are both narratively tied to Saridnik. Kurapika wants to find Saridnik to retrieve the remainder of the eyes and Saridnik wants to find Melody out of fascination for her musical Nen ability. Beyond that, there's the relationship that Kurapika and Melody have. She's sort of like a reliable big sister to him who comforts him when he needs it. Leorio puts his trust in her and even her Nen ability reflects her role in the story. She's an emitter type who projects aura when she plays her flute and by doing so she can alleviate fatigue, cure illnesses and just generally enchant the listener in a comforting way. 
and she does this not only for Kurapika, but during the most recent banquet on the Black Whale, which sparked Sarajnik's interest in her. And this is where we move on from narrative analysis and get into what you guys are here for. The theory. The most compelling piece of evidence for this theory is this panel right here. Sarajnik's second Nen Beast has the number 666 on its chest, which you probably know as the Devil's number. Referring back to what I said at the start of the video about Sarajnik being the Devil himself, this is pretty self-explanatory, right? This Nen Beast was awakened by Sarajnik himself. It isn't like the Guardian Spirit Beast which was given to him through the Seed Urn Ceremony. Since Nen abilities are inherently tied to the user, this beast having the devil's number in its chest is an interesting implication to say the least. After Theta was touched by Sarajnik's guardian spirit beast, her face became bruised. It looked cracked, like some sort of itchy, swollen patch was on her face. This looks a lot like what happened to Melody's friend in the small panel of him we received in chapter 73, only to a much lesser degree. Sarajnik also has extreme interest in Melody for some reason. All he knows about her is that she is a flute player who can use Nen. Why is he so fascinated in her to the point of inviting her to meet him when there are so many other Nen users he's aware of on the Black Whale? Since it's not about Nen of course, it's clearly because she's a musician, and I suspect he wants some sort of guinea pig for the Sonata, someone to play and test the Devil's song. Sarajnik was introduced as a man with a passion for the arts. He is a renaissance man, and it's quite clearly stated that what he is seeking is a synthesis of the arts. Something produced by youth who have a future and are put in extreme situations. When it comes to that term, a synthesis of the arts, is there anything more fitting than the Sonata of Darkness? It is literally a very, very dangerous sheet of music said to be composed by Satan himself for how dark it is. This makes it something incredibly appealing to a black market collector like Sarajnik. I would go so far as to say there isn't a single artifact more appealing to him in the entire world. I also think there's a strong possibility that the Sonata of Darkness is a product of extreme post-mortem Nen similar to the Seed Urn which was conjured by the first Kakin King's strong desire of perpetuation for his descendants. Post-mortem Nen would explain why it's so powerful and tie into the Succession War arc really really well, where this concept of Nen after death has played an important role like never before. Assuming the theory is correct, the one thing I'm not so sure of is how exactly things would pan out. Sarajnik either already has the Sonata, or will attain it somehow in this arc, but either of those aren't really necessary to the point of this video. The ultimate purpose of this theory is to draw the idea that Sarajnik is associated with the Sonata in some way, shape or form. This is a man with boundless, terrifying potential, one of the most broken Hatsus we've ever seen. Not one, but two Nen Beasts potentially being in possession of music said to be composed by Satan himself. This is absolutely terrifying to think about, and I think it's more than plausible. Togashi wouldn't just incorporate the Devil's Number onto his Nen Beast for no reason. What do you guys think? Is this theory believable, or is it too far-fetched? Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. I've been thinking about this theory ever since it was first brought to me, and it's pretty mind-blowing to me, I'm not gonna lie. Togashi is the kind of writer who pulls off the unthinkable, so it's hard to put too much stock into Hunter Hunter theories, but this one sounds exactly like something he would write, tying together the character arcs of Kurapika and Melody into one ultimate villain in classic Togashi fashion. Thank you guys very much for watching.